Hello, welcome back to BS7671 The Course, a load of top tips for passing the BS7671 exam. What we're going to look at now is the absolute understanding of the regs and the underlying, underpinning way you're going to work it and how you're going to train your brain to do it. What you've got to remember is you're going to get asked some questions. So you need to tie those questions into something, but that's this entire book, which is massive. You need to know how to separate the parts of this book into the part you're after. And that comes from reading the question, working out what the question's asking, what it's asking about, then finding the required information. For example, looking at the list in front of me now, we have got all the parts. So we've got part one, part two, part three, all the way down to part eight. They are all listed in the book and they all have contents pages as well. But think of it like this. If I say to you, what does this word mean, buzz bar trunking? You are like, oh, what does that mean? Well, I'll find it out. I'll look in the book. You might start looking at the index. Don't use the index. The index is dog shit. The index is pure crap. Don't ever get taught to using it. Train your brain to analyse and look at the question. So, what is buzz bar trunking? Well, let's have a look at the parts and see where it might fit in. Part one is the scope, object and fundamental principles. Well, I don't think it's going to be in there because I understand what those words mean. Part two is the definitions. Now, a buzz bar trunking system is probably defined in there as a definition because it's got a, a, a definition in the regs. So I think it's probably going to be in there. Looking at the other ones now, if I ask you, when inspecting and testing, straight away, if you look at the list, you'll probably think, well, the answer to that could be in part six. If I said to you, when installing a sauna, where are you going to go? Pause and look at it. Hopefully, you've picked special locations because a sauna is a special location. And knowing what the question's asking you and knowing what part that's in makes life loads easier. So, we look at part one, the scope, object, and fundamental principles. It's written in legalese. Part two is the definitions, the dictionary. Part three, assessment of general characteristics. Part four, protection for safety. Part five, selection and erection of equipment. Part six, inspection and testing. Part seven, special installations and locations. And part eight, new for this edition, functional requirements. But what do they mean in English? Well, you'll be pleased to know I've compiled this list and I'm gonna put this on a downloadable document or somewhere, look in the comments on this video or the description. I produce this. Part one is what it does and doesn't apply to and what it aims to achieve. Part two is what terms and abbreviations mean. Part three is things to consider during the initial design and installation and the supply stuff. Part four is what to do to protect the user and the installation. Part five is what materials to use and how to use them, it should say there. Part six is inspection and testing to be done to show it's safe and the certificates to be used. Part seven is places where there's an increased risk of electric shock. Part eight is flash bastards who make their own power at the moment. And then the appendix at the end, uh, additional information relating to parts within the book. Now, don't print that shit off. That shit's, that shit's for me. That is how I see it. That is how I, in my head, understand the parts of regulations. What you want to do is go back to this page and or go into the regs and look at those and write those down on a bit of paper. Part one, part two, part three, and all the proper definitions. Then... Have a read of the book, have a read of the first few pages in the contents pages and write down what they mean to you. They might That might look very similar to what I've wrote there, but write down how you understand it, what you mean to the, you. Part 7, for example, special locations, is places where there's an increased risk of electric shock. I always see them in a domestic environment as there's only one place in a domestic environment or the only place in a domestic environment where you are at risk of electric shock normally means you're wet and you're naked or naked. So whenever I encounter an area in a domestic property like a swimming pool, a sauna, a shower, a bathroom, I always consider, will they be naked or wet? Oh yeah, and if they are, I make consideration looking in part seven. Likewise, if I'm asked a question about anything that's a bit out the ordinary and untoward, I'm going to part seven. So the best way to understand the parts and then understand what the question is asking you and what part the question is relating to is to look at each part and then write yourself a list like this so that you know what that part is. So part two, I've put what terms and abbreviations mean. I also call it the dictionary, the electrical dictionary. And in my head, I've got all these thoughts and feelings about part two and what it is. 
Part four, I've got all these thoughts and feelings about that. Part four is when I'm when I'm picking things that protect me, RCDs, fuses, um, MCBs. I've got all that feeling in my head. Part five is, is selection erection, which I now understand as a term in itself, but what materials to use now to use them now to make things and how they can be done. And it's important that you get into the flow of this because, again, it's all about when asked the question, your brain should be thinking, that's that's part four things he's asking me. Or you may have to, if someone's asking you a question, stop them because they're asking you multiple questions. If they say, oh, when I'm doing some testing, well, if you want to know the regs regarding testing, you want to be in part six, sunshine. And if part six isn't enough, you need to go to the guidance note because part six is a very small section. But it pays to understand what each part means in plain English because you work in plain English and this book does not. So get yourselves in the book, get yourselves in the parts, read the first few pages of each parts and get a feel for what it means and write your own list of what they mean so that you can dissect a question and head straight to that part. Because I'll say in another video, if someone asks me a question on inspection and testing and I go to part six or I go in my book, look, yeah, that's the book. Yeah, that's part six. It's only about six pages long. So if you get a question that you know is about inspection and testing, you're going to get a freebie because you can read that. All them six pages will probably get that question right. And I'm going to talk about this more than the exam weights. Section seven, for example, which is special location. So as soon as someone asks me a question and I understand it's a special location, bosh, I'm down to this much now. The best bit is, though, in the front of special locations, there's a massive list of all the special locations that are covered. You've got your own book, so I don't need to do that really, but you can. So if someone's asking you about um, photovoltaic or saunas or location containing bath or shower, that is further broke down so that section 701, locations containing bath or shower, is only those pages. And that is how, a prime example of how, you turn this much book into... This much book, and then this much chapter into this much chapter because you're dealing with a bath or a shower, and that is how you go from lump to small lump to small lump to answer for the question in the exam. And that, although this video is two slides and me repeating the same things, I'm repeating because it's important that you understand that. So to even speed up that process, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you how to tab a regs book because all these tabs make you faster and knowing your sections makes you faster knowing your parts makes you faster and in an exam you've only got two hours so it pays to be fast so next one we're going to concentrate on the tab in but don't just jump to that start learning the parts understanding what they mean to you and developing your own way of translating the legalese terminology of a regs book into something that you understand see you later as